Good day everyone and thanks for tuning in. You previously saw and exhausted me walking off an epic milk run with Rex in Mount Isa, where I was feeling a bit airsick and worse for wear. A little nausea isn't going to stop me though. We've got lots more to cover and I'm looking forward to getting part 2 of this milk run started. And good morning my gorgeous people, all my gorgeous viewers and all my gorgeous subscribers and welcome back to another one of my videos. And this morning, bright and early, 6.30am, I'm coming to you from the mining town of Mount Isa in Queensland. And this is part 2 of my milk run with Rex. After yesterday's intense journey, I was actually quite sick getting off the plane and I felt sick right all the way until I arrived at the hotel. And I'm staying at the Ibis, uh, you see behind me. Well anyway, so today I'm continuing on part 2 with Rex to Cairns and it won't be as intense as yesterday. It only takes about 4 stops to get there. So it should be pretty quick. The whole journey takes about 5.5 hours I think. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna get some brekkie at Macca's. I hope they're open because the lights are not on. Yeah, I need to get something to eat otherwise I, I don't want to be sick on the plane again. Yeah, so um, Bracky first and then we're off to the airport, so I'll see you in a bit. If you're new to my channel, my name's Ryan and I'm glad you found me. I create heaps of travel and food related videos and if you're a hopeless foodie and travel junkie like I am, be sure to hit the subscribe button and bell icon so you do not miss what's coming up on my channel. While you're down there, smash the like button. Your support is very much appreciated. Mount Isa Airport hosts the usual suspects of airlines you'll find at a regular Australian regional airport. With Rex presently serving the largest number of destinations from here. No surprise as Rex has the contract to service these destinations under a contract scheme from the Queensland Government. I'll touch more about that towards the end of the video. Being such a small airport, the staff remembered me from yesterday because I was ushered into arrivals as the one and only passenger getting off my flight. I highly recommend you check that video out if you haven't. This early in the morning, nothing is opened here, so make sure your tummy is filled before you catch your flight. After spending almost 10 hours on the Saab 340 yesterday, it took me a while before I could feel my bum. Plus, I've almost forgotten how a 737 looks like. And I've also forgotten that a 737 can look so big, like a Titanic. Departures this morning included the 737 bound for Brisbane, a Dash 8 destined for Cloncurry and Townsville, and our Saab 340 at the end of the apron heading to Cairns. Our ride was on Zulu Lima Violet, a Saab 340B which first flew with American Eagle in February 1996 before coming to Rex in 2008, making her just over 26 years old at the time of writing. If you're joining us for the first time, this seat has a seat pitch of 30 inches and a fold-down table. These retro overhead consoles have a reading lamp and air nozzles, plus the seat width is quite comfy at just over 18 inches. By the way, these seats also do not recline in case you're wondering.
Our first stop today is Dumaji. Flight path is a straight northerly direction, clocking a distance of 310 kilometers and a flight time of 51 minutes. If time permits, Rex offers complimentary coffee, tea, water, together with a sweet or savory snack. Soft drinks and alcohol is available at a price. Today's snacks consisted of a lemon yogurt slice and a packet of soy crackers. Of course, I chose to wash it all down with some tea. Before long, we were descending into Dumaji. This is a town of about 1,400 mostly indigenous people. At the time of this trip, we weren't allowed to visit due to COVID-19 restrictions unless you're a returning resident or you have approval by the Dumaji Shire to visit. Residents here, unfortunately, have a high percentage of underlying health issues, so there is a constant effort to prevent the pandemic from reaching their doorstep. We were reminded again on the ground not to get off the aircraft to use the toilet at the airport. Essential supplies were unloaded from the cargo compartment and then we took on a handful of passengers heading with us to Cairns. This turnaround was 20 minutes and we were off into the skies again in no time. Our next stop is Mornington Island. I was really looking forward to this sector because today marks the first time since July 2019 that I'm landing at an airport outside the mainland of Australia. Flying distance between Dumaji and Mornington Island is 146 kilometers and a flight time of 40 minutes. And just like that, with the magic of flight, I left the mainland of Australia for the first time in a long, long while. Besides taking in the views, I'm also having a moment thinking about how much the world has changed in the last two years. Did you know I'm planning my first international flight in July this year? Now that would be an occasion worth marking. We're now coming into the Mornington Island, which is located in the Gulf of Carpentaria. It's the largest and the northernmost of the 22 islands that form the Wellesley Islands group. The population sits just above a thousand people, most of them in the township of Ganana. The airport we're landing at was temporarily used by the RAAF and Allied forces during World War II. After a quick swap of passengers getting off and on, the doors were closed and we were on our way. And just like that, my first overseas experience was over in a jiffy.
Our next stop was Normanton. And the flight path required us to leave the island to fly over the Gulf and back to mainland. Passing by Karumba, we clock a distance of 230 kilometers and a flight time of 50 minutes. As we coast back into the mainland, we overfly Karumba Airport on the way to Normanton. Although this is listed as one of the destinations on today's Gulf Run, there are no commercial flights flying into this airport unless the town is flooded, which occurs very often. When that happens, this flight will stop here, bringing with it essential supplies. But today, we continue on to Normanton, where it's only a 10-minute flight from here. We're coming into the town of Normanton. It has a present population of just over 1,200 people, the main economy here is cattle grazing and it also has a major prawn fishing industry under its care in Karumba, where we overflew earlier on. The prawning industry in the Gulf is recognized by the United Nations as some of the best managed sustainable marine fisheries in the world. On today's Gulf run, Normanton Airport is the only destination we're getting off for some fresh air. This terminal was constructed in 2006 and it sees services from two airlines, Rex and West Wing Aviation, which does a lot of commuter flights and mining charters. We will stop here for 30 minutes. Soon enough, the boarding announcement came in a form of a single person yelling loudly into the sitting area. It was loud enough for us standing outside to hear as well. Ah, gotta love these little regional airports. So off we went for our final sector to Cairns. As we got airborne and turned left, we said goodbye to Normanton for our 506 km journey towards Cairns. This final sector would be the longest on today's run, clocking in at 1 hour 10 minutes. There was nothing much to do now other than to relax, take in the scenery out there and enjoy the service. As we commence our arrival into Cairns, let's summarize this amazing experience today. I've now flown on Rex on both their 737 and numerous other Saab 340 flights and I can only conclude their service is absolutely second to none. Their slogan is our heart is in the country and that just underscores their commitment to serve the community. At the end of the day, Rex is still a business but they also have a heart and that shows in their service delivery. They come across as sincere and genuine and there is something so innocent and endearing about how simple their operations are. And it keeps me coming back for more. Just as well, I have two more flights with them on my epic trip through Queensland, so make sure you stay tuned to my channel. The Queensland government contracts these flights out to airlines every five years to ensure isolated communities out there aren't cut off from civilization. These flights are essential to bring in supplies, cargo and personnel to ensure these little towns out there get all the assistance they need. 
especially in times of crisis. Hospital patients from the towns of Dumaji and Mornington Island frequently have to take these flights to Cairns to get the treatment they need. And this just underscores the importance of these flights. For now, let's prepare for our arrival into a wet and miserable looking Cairns International Airport. What a wet welcome to Cairns and Queensland. It's uh, I was told it's a wet season, but didn't expect this to be didn't expect it to be this wet. But hey, I suppose that's why they call it the wet season, right? Well, anyway, yep, that was uh, milk run number two with Regional Express from Mount Isa to Cairns. Uh, they skipped one stop in Burktown. So we flew straight to Mornington and then to Normanton to here. So it was a pretty short uh, milk run compared to what I experienced yesterday. Well, um, this is uh, milk run number two. So flight number two with Rex is uh, done. I have um, two more flights with them. So tomorrow I'm going to be in Cairns overnight and tomorrow I head up to Cape York uh, with Rex to Barmaga. No more milk run. I don't think I can handle another milk run. This will be a non-stop flight from Cairns to Barmaga. So look forward to that uh, trip report, okay? And um, yeah, I'll chuck the details of my Instagram up there so you can follow my travels in real time. And also it will give you an idea of the kind of videos that will be coming up on my channel. Okay, if you have not done so, hit the subscribe button and also tap that bell notification icon so you know every time when I embark on another adventure like this. In the meantime, take care all of you, stay safe, and I'll see you for my next video. Bye!